All right. Um, yeah, so my name is Chris Forlena. I'm the GBPM project lead, which is a completely open source BPM platform um, and also an architect for the Red Hat Business Automation uh, product line, which is a supported offering based on GBPM and, and other open source projects. Um, today I'll be talking about the challenge that we and our customers are seeing in the context of BPM and cloud, uh, whether it's a public cloud, a private cloud, a hybrid cloud. Um, and so I probably don't have to explain that while cloud builds on decades of IT experience, etc., it also introduces new challenges like resource, CPU memory constraints, and new paradigms like DevOps and microservices. And so this has an impact on the entire life cycle of your business process. So whether it's from all the, the authoring, the execution, and the monitoring, if you do that in the cloud, there are new challenges there. Today I'll be focusing mostly on the latter two, so execution and monitoring in the cloud. Um, and in that context, our, our process engine has always been what we call a lightweight engine. So, I mean, it even runs on, on my mobile phone. Um, and that's extremely useful in the context of cloud. Um, it's also embeddable. So that means you can embed it inside your applications or inside your own cloud architecture. Um, and for scalability, you kind of need the ability to run lots of these engines in parallel. But I think most importantly, there's now this ecosystem where a process is actually part of a, a larger goal, which is app development in general. So we need to play well in that ecosystem. And deploying one project in the cloud is actually fairly trivial. We've, we've been able to do that for years. But if you have lots of different projects, and each project has lots of different versions, and you've got multiple environments like dev stage production environment, you run into issues. So if you're not careful and you create lots of independent, isolated containers, you end up with something which basically you can't maintain, you can't control anymore. So what we've done and what I'll be presenting today is how we're introducing some new components in our cloud architecture to, to, to solve those challenges. And one of them is a controller, uh, which kind of has a dual purpose. One is literally trying to keep track of all the engines out there which are running. Um, like and which projects are running for each of those, those engines, but also to manage those services if that's something what you want. So we can decide, okay, when the service starts up, which projects need to be deployed, or even dynamically deploy new projects to, to engines out there. Um, another component out there that's doing some of the heavy lifting is this, what we call the smart router. So that, that's a component that can delegate requests that you have to the, the right engine so that your application doesn't need to figure out where it needs to go. But it also can aggregate data across multiple servers. Um, but so smart routers and controllers don't make issues go away. So what if there's an issue in one of the engines in your, in your cloud architecture? So how will like a process or task administrator go and figure out what, where the issue is and what it needs to do? So the challenge, uh, I mean, the, the, the approach we've used there is to have a monitoring console that can literally connect to any engine out there. So based on, for example, the topology that the controller is aware of, you can go and get the data you need directly from the engines running almost anywhere. And a smart router can then be used to kind of aggregate data across multiple servers because you don't want your administrators to kind of go server by server to figure out if there's an issue. You need the aggregated view. Um, and also deploying new processes needs to play well in that ecosystem of deploying new applications. So you got like things like blue-green deployment where you deploy multiple versions in parallel and at some point make the switch or, or canary deployment where you start small and then gradually increase the, 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 the requests to the new, new service. So we need to be able to support that as well. So we've created cloud images in the, in the true open source way. They're very layered so that customers can easily go and, and, and configure or even completely customize them to their needs. Um, but the challenge and the complexity is, is not in the images themselves. It's actually in bringing this all together. If you've got lots of engines out there, you need a, a high available monitoring environment and routers. And you need templates, recommended architectures to be able to run these things in a, in a, in a good way. Um, and so in the, in the demo, I'll be showing a, a simple end-user hardware order application uh, running on top of uh, Red Hat OpenShift platform. I'll actually be using a mini-shift instance that, that's running on my laptop. Um, and in the scenario, what I'll do is I'll, I'll deploy a, this application in the cloud. Um, I'll connect my monitoring application to it so I can see what's going on, but then deploy a new version. So in blue, I'll be deploying a new version of the business logic uh, and then be monitoring. Uh, in this case, I'll be using some sort of canary deployment. We'll be running both versions in parallel. 
um, and figuring out, uh, monitoring what's going on, and then if necessary, we can actually um, take action as a, as a process administrator. All right. I've, I'm going to use this slide to kind of try and guide you through the demo because um, there's different people involved in this demo and, and, and I'm, I'll be switching screens a lot. So I guess th with, this, with this slide, I actually want to show that there's, um, there's, there's three kinds of, th three personas basically. There's a developer who's going to be deploying the app, etc. is developing the process, is going to be updating the process with new business logic. There's going to be an end user. He, he actually is not an expert in BPM. He's just, he just wants to use his custom app to kind of order hardware. He's, he, he, he's not aware of all the technicalities behind that. And there's a, what we call a process or task administrator who's, who's aware of the, the BPM platform and is responsible for the, for the health of, of the, the entire platform. They'll, they're all using different tools. I mean, the end user is using the, the custom application that, that we're going to use in the demo. The, the developer is using various tools like the, the OpenShift tooling or the design time environment we have, and the, the administrator is using the monitoring tooling. And then I'll, I'll just run through that quickly, as in like this is what it, what it is if you just have one version. And then if I deploy a next version, I'll kind of go through that, those steps again, deploy the new version by the developer, um, let the end user again uh, order some uh, hardware and see, let, let's monitor what's, what's going to happen at runtime. So I'll try to come back to this slide occasionally so you guys don't get lost. Um, all right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is this is basically my OpenShift environment. So this is a, a mini shift. Um, so I mean, if you're not aware of OpenShift, OpenShift is the Red Hat, uh, a Red Hat product for, uh, for a cloud offering. It runs on top of various uh, cloud providers, or you can just run it on your uh, bare bone uh, own servers as well. Um, and it's a, basically an abstraction uh, on top of uh, all, these, all these providers. It provides infrastructure as a service. Um, so this is an empty project. There's nothing running yet in this environment. Um, and so my developer can basically just, yeah, obviously I pre-created a uh, custom application. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly just let the developer deploy um, an, the, the, the custom application into my OpenShift environment. This application has a process engine embedded. And I think what's going to be important today is to kind of realize that most of what I'll be showing are not capabilities you've never seen before. Because actually, these are all capabilities that we, we probably could have demoed a few years ago. But the, the change is that we're, we're kind of now using these capabilities in a cloud environment which is completely distributed. So this is moving away from a platform where there's like a centralized server where all your processes are deployed, et cetera. This is literally going to move away from that, saying like there's lots of distributed engines out there, but we can still provide you with the same capabilities. Um, so what this view, and this, again, this is a view that's for your, for your um, um, DevOps people, et cetera. They can go and look that the application actually has been deployed. You can go look at the logs. I mean, all the configuration that's behind this. Um, so you can ex inspect which services are running in your, in your cloud environment. Um, in this case, I can also show the application itself. Um, so I'm just going to open the project that I just deployed. Um, it's one of the, the um, it's a case management example that we, that we have out of the box in the product. So, I mean, if you look at some of the samples that we, uh, that we include, this is basically the, the, the case management application that I'll be showing. So, this is, if you want to try using something like this, um, it, it's fairly easy to do so. And if I open the project, there's lots of different things in there. Forms, data models, processes. Let me just quickly show the process that we'll be executing. Um, so it's an IT order application. So as, a, as an employee, um, employee, you just want to order new hardware. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty data-based. So there's a normal flow that you will be following. Like you, you would send in the order. Um, the, uh, the manufacturer will send you specs of the laptop he, he plans to, uh, to ship to you. Your manager needs to approve it. It needs to actually be shipped, etc. But there's lots of things that can go wrong. So it's really data-driven where depending on which milestones you've achieved, which data we have, what might be going wrong, there's various paths you could be, you could be taking. I'm not going to go into detail in, on, on, the, um, on what the actual process does. But 
if I switch back now to my demo, now I'm going to show the actual application being used by the end users. Um, so I can use the link here to kind of open up my application. It's a fairly simple application. Obviously, that's, uh, that's the intention so that your end users can understand what it's doing. Um, it's using the language of the, of the end user. You can order new hardware. In this case, if I just want to order a, a new laptop, I have to select my manager, and I can put in um, a new order. And this order, you can always come back and go and inspect, like, okay, where is the, the order currently? Um, so this is basically milestone-based. There's five milestones in the, in the case that can be, can be reached. These are the participants that are um, involved, uh, possible actions. At this point, there's not much you can do other than close the case. Uh, and there's, at this point, we're going to wait for the, um, the vendor to send, uh, for example, a hardware, um, hardware details. Um, so I'm just going to do one step, that step. I'm not going to run through the um, entire process. But if I log in as, for example, a hardware provider, I can see that there's a, a new request for me that's available. I can pick it up. This is just a task form that's associated with it. Um, so let me just attach one random file and then go back as a, an end user. I can simply go back to the same application and inspect my current orders. You will see that this has obviously moved forward. First milestone has been reached. I can see that I can actually see the document that's attached here, uh, and it's now sent to my manager for uh, for approval. So I mean, this is the use case itself isn't that relevant. It's just a, an end user use case, where in this case the engine is running closely next to it or actually as part of the application itself. So. What I'll do next is now assume the role of this process administrator. So I need to figure, I mean, things might be going wrong. How do I, who, how do I inspect an engine which might be running at, at any location actually in the cloud? So I'm going to switch back to our altering environment, uh, sorry, our, um, our workbench. And I guess I'm just, at this point, I'm using one workbench which actually has all the capabilities. So it supports from altering all the way to monitoring it can also be split up. Actually, we see that in the context of cloud, we typically see that the monitoring application is split up as a separate uh, installation, and authoring is actually more something that's available in the development environment, but not something that you use in the production environment. So you can do that, but for simplicity, I just have um, one application here. So to be able to connect to um, this execution engine, this is a view that, that's representing what the controller does. And I have to select the right one. But what this information actually shows me, there's, there's different servers that I'm aware of. So there's three types of servers currently registered in this system. But in this case, there's one engine. This is actually the URL of the, of the, of the execution server, which is running in the cloud. Um, so this is, we, we are aware of one engine running this configuration. And the config, configuration itself is that's just version one of my IT orders project is running there. So I can go and look, okay, this is the, um, this is the, the, the engine. I can go and inspect that. And if I go to the management view, I can, I can choose which server I want to connect to. So if I select the IT orders, um, template, I can see actually the instance that I just started uh, in the cloud. So in this case, this application is running on my local host. So I actually wanted to show that if you have a cloud architecture, you can choose what you run where. This is actually, I mean, you can assume that this is running on-premise. So you could decide my, mon my monitoring application is running on-premise. And maybe some of your execution engines are. And maybe some of your execution engines are running in one cloud. And some of your execution engines are running in another cloud. It's a completely distributed architecture. But we still give you the kind of monitoring capability that you're used to. Um, so you can, I mean, in this case, this is nothing new. You can go look at the uh, process details, the variables, the document that is attached, et cetera. So I mean, the good news is that by moving um, from what we had, like a, I mean, what, we, what we typically saw was like on-premise installations where you had large servers running lots of different projects. E even if we move to a completely distributed application, 
where all these engines are running in different locations, you don't necessarily lose any features. And I, think, I guess that's one of the things, it's like while it might look the same, actually that's a great achievement. Um, so what we'll be doing now is deploying a new version of this project. So I'll, I'll update the process definition first to kind of do a tiny change so there's a, a, a new version uh, available. So as a developer, again, I'll move back to my altering environment. Open up my process again. And in this case, the only change I'm going to do, which is just for demo purposes, is that so we do allow you to specify service level agreements as well. In, uh, you can define them at a process level. So say, like, okay, this process needs to be completed within a certain point in time. Or you can do it at individual task level. So like, okay, each of these tasks, I expect them to be ready after a certain period. Otherwise, the, the, the SLA um, is violated. So in this case, I can, I can just update a process and say, like, I'm, I'm defining an SLA. So it doesn't have any SLA defined uh, up front. And I can define an SLA for that process now, which I'm going to set to 10 seconds. So obviously not realistic, but it will show that um, in the demo, it will quickly start failing those new instances because after 10 seconds, those, um, those SLAs will be violated. Um, so as a developer, I can go and... Uh, decide, okay, this project is now done. I want to deploy a new version of my project. So everything we have is completely versioned. I was running version 1.0 of my project. Um, this is actually going to be version 1.3 that I'll be building. Um, so I just built this project. I believe it's done. Um, you, can, you can run tests, etc. And then decide to deploy this new version of your project. Um, I'm going to show you two options that we that we have available, um, and I'll, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll be actually demoing one live. Um, so when you're going to be deploying a new version of the project, we typically have two options. One is to say, like, okay, I've got this, um, it's what we call immutable images. So you've got a, a process engine, you've got a project. So what you could do is you take the project, deploy it on top of an execution engine, create an image for that. So that's an immutable image. That's, it's always going to be, a, it's, it's a very, um, it's a, 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 a something that's that's used commonly in in like microservice approaches. You just want to have it once, define it once, push it through a complete CI/CD cycle, and what you actually are testing needs to be identical what you, to what you want to run in production. So you just build it once. You don't allow any changes to it. This kind of immutable image, you can in, in this case we can we can generate provision that for you on the fly. So. I've pre-configured my, my OpenShift environment, and when I want to generate a new immutable image, I can, I can basically just go and select which projects I want to run on there. Um, so these are, I mean, there's, there's like four, four versions, I mean, two different products, and, and the IT orders has three different versions. So I can go and select how many projects I want to deploy on my server, and then generate an image for that. Um, this is something that, depending on, on the customer, um, you have a lot of flexibility here. We have customers that say, like, actually, I want an execution server for every single project out there, every single version. They're all independent. Or you could decide, no, no, actually, yeah, you can decide how you want to group them. Maybe all projects of the same type, like different versions, can run on the same server, or you can combine pro multiple projects on, on, on uh, the same server. That's up to you. That depends on your requirements uh, regarding the architecture. Uh, I'm not going to do this because actually generating an image and uploading that and deploying that in the cloud actually takes a few minutes. So that's, the, uh, that's usually not a problem. If you have a CI-CD pipeline, that's fine. It'll run through that. But from a demo point of view, it's not the ideal way. Um, I'm going to use the more dynamic version, um, which is, hang on. This is the controller, like I said, and the controller knows there's currently one project deployed. I can literally just go in, and this is something that if you want to do that, because like I said, not everyone likes to have these kind of dynamic capabilities in their architecture, but if you want these kind of uh, capabilities in your architecture, you can go connect to this, to this um, process engine and say, like, I'm going to deploy a new version of this project, the, the version that I just built. All right, I'm going to automatically start it, and I'm going to, it's a case application. And so when I click Finish, what the controller will do is basically it has the new version of the project. It will send it to the, to the execution server, and almost instantly this new project is now available. 
Um, notice that we're not overriding anything. The old version's still here, version 1.0 is still here, but version 1.3 has now been deployed there as well. Um, obviously, the next question is, well, what happens? I mean, these are both there. Um, and that's what these deployment strategies will bring. So deployment strategies allow you to then define how do I want this system to behave now? Because, and, and, and by default, what we would do is we would keep all instances that are running on version 1, we will keep them running on version 1. They, they were started with version 1, they will stay on version 1. Um, for the new instances, we typically take the latest version. But this is completely configurable. And so in the demo, I actually created a, a, a demo deployment, which will basically just switch between both of them. It'll use the version 1, version 3, version 1, version 3. Obviously, like, if you want to do this somewhat realistic for like canary deployment, what you typically would do is you would start sending a few requests to version 3, start monitoring if everything goes well. If that's fine, you increase the load, and maybe if you detect, okay, everything seems to be running fine, you just do all, oh, everything is going to be using the new instance. But you can completely define and customize how you want this to behave. But in this case, I'm going to go back now so back to my overview slides, I'm going to be here. As an end user, I'm going to just keep ordering hardware. Chris, we're going to have to finish in about three minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Almost through it. Um, so all the two more instances. And then go back to my monitoring application. You can actually see now that there were two new instances started, one with version 1.0 and one with version 1.3. And if I turn on our SLA capabilities, um, you can see that the instance that, that was st um, first started with version 1.3 has, has this SLA defined. The other ver instances don't. Um, and obviously, I, if I just refresh, um, the 10 seconds have passed now, you can start seeing that this was violated. So what your process administrators will do is they will be able to detect issues. In this case, it's an SLA violation, but it could just as well be like all of a sudden we start seeing errors associated with certain instances. Admin will go in, figure out what's going wrong. He might detect, okay, it's version 1.3, there's an issue, I need to roll back. Um, et cetera. So this, this will allow the administrators to figure out what they need to do, even though all these instances might be running completely distributed. And then the final thing, which is then the, the smart router. So I've got this one. I actually also got another, um, another server here, and there's only one instance running. They are using, they're, they're, this, this server is running locally on my laptop as well. It could be running anywhere. It has a separate database, so there's no data sharing but I can still look across both of them. So I can actually look through my router, and my router will make sure that I got this aggregated view. Um, so it doesn't really matter on how many instances you have. If you want to look at all the instances with errors across all your servers, the router can take care of that. Um, so um, that's basically the demo. Um, just to clarify maybe some, some things, I focused on process, but our execution engine is very generic. It combines processes and rules and, and planning, etc. So you can apply the same for decision service, same, same kind of architecture for decision services as well. And the other key part is that, so the, 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 the actual challenge here is that the fact that the backend is completely distributed. We have, this is a full, so this is our monitoring console that we run on premise. We have not lost a single feature by moving to a completely distributed uh, environment, which I believe is actually the, the, the challenge if you move away from this centralized server where all the data is located in one place, et cetera. If, once you start distributing it, the challenge is getting that overview back together, which is we've tried to solve. All right, questions? No, I guess then we're still on time, Bruce. <laughs>